Hey everyone, this is Mr. Everything, and today I wanted to review this, um, specifically this gateway. This is the T-Mobile Home Internet Gateway. Um, essentially, your whole T-Mobile service is coming down to one box and one box only. Most people probably already know this, but if you're new to it, there is no install. There's no wires. There's nothing. It's uh, like it's like a cell phone. So basically, those antennas are in here. You plug this in, you hook it up to your phone, to the very little managing you can do is done there. And it has a built-in router, for better or worse. And there is uh, there are two Ethernet ports on the back. I'm going to talk about this one, um, more so improvements and upgrades I would like to see, whether it's another Arcadian or they go of a different manufacturer. I don't know much about what the world you know offers in terms of cellular gateways or if they could just add improvements to something like this now there is the nokia one but for the most part i think the um, suggestions would apply to both i really think that they're trying to move to this one i think this one has wi-fi ax and the other one has wi-fi c the nokia has a few things that you can shut the wi-fi off easier i think you might have a few more settings but then this one seems to be better with cooling and um, all the upgrades more or less would apply to both. So I think the first thing I'll mention, just because it, it makes most sense, is the two upgrades I did. And one is that I think T-Mobile should offer a gateway that has a built-in fan. And the reason for this is since you're stuck with this and that's it seems to be what they want, is they want you to just use one box, no router or anything extra. So if you're going to rely on your whole internet connection and they think this is the future where this is going to be as good as any other hardline ISP, then I think taking care of your equipment and having your equipment perform as good as possible, it's passive cooling. You do have a lot of uh, air grates here and on the bottom, but again, no fan. So when I would touch this under heavy use, it would just be warm and it was always warm. It never felt like it got hot. Um, my uh, old Verizon DSL um, modem had a router built in, but I had shut it off and connected it to a separate router. And even just like as a modem, it would, was always hotter than this. So it isn't bad, but I added this fan. I have a separate video on this. Um, there's a seller on Etsy that 3D prints these. So that's what you're hearing in this video. I'm not sure if I can edit some of that out, but that's the probably worth hearing it so you know what it'll sound like. And that now it's always cool to the touch. Not even just it's always cooler. To touch, you know, something here. This is cooler just having that airflow coming through it. Um and then you can see kind of how I managed it here just to make it look a little better. And then I talked about this in the review of this fan. But if you're going to uh, get this, I would suggest buying that fan. If you're just trying it and you don't know if it's going to work, don't buy it day one because your router shouldn't or your gateway shouldn't have any problems. But if this is something you're going to stick with, then go ahead and get that fan. But again, T-Mobile should just offer a model with the fan. I believe the uh, Verizon gateways have a fan in them. So, And I also added this uh, USB Type-C extension just because since you want this router or this gateway up high uh, it was just a little too short with the included cable or power supply um, that's not really something they need to improve on but since they want it up high they probably should make the cord a little longer this is just a one and a half foot braided extension it's pretty good quality most people would probably just plug that power supply into a you know regular power cord extension but I like all my stuff like this in a power or a surge protector. So I didn't want to go like a six foot extension to a surge. So I just added just an extension on this USB end. But uh, that's the two upgrades I've done to this. Now, I think to get a little more particular um, external antennas, really, that's probably the number one thing that they should add. Um, and I mean, I don't mean Wi-Fi, I mean cellular. Again, I'm on my desk here. I'm about two feet away from a window. I get very good signal. I have direct line of sight to my tower. It's about a mile and a half down the road. I'm up on a hill, a couple of trees in the way, and I'm in a brick apartment, but 
I go outside, I get five bars real easy. I come inside, I'm down to four, and the speeds are basically the same. The signal doesn't matter that much. If it's three or more, you're probably gonna get about what that tower is capable of. But um, for people, at, especially in rural areas, they should just have that ability. Um, that's one of the differences with the Nokia is it's much easier to get into that gateway to add an external, but you're spending like $300 for a good a name brand set of uh, antennas. I'm sure you can go cheaper and just experiment, but uh, this one is much harder to get into and they should just provide, not the antennas, but just fittings. I think it's like SMA or something. They could probably just put those and it wouldn't really cost them anything. It's up to the um, individual. And then if you're really thinking um, money-minded, you could just, T-Mobile could just sell those too if they had a bit of a store for the home internet products. Um, the next most important thing, I think that adding a bridge mode would be nice. Um, just for that, I would like to just use this like I use my DSL modem, hook up my airports, or at this point I'd probably just buy a newer, better um, router. But I don't understand it, but I like gaming and I get a moderate NAT type just directly with this. So if I add a uh, router, I guess I'll get a double NAT, and this doesn't have a static IP, you could add a VPN, but then you're slowing your signal down, and, and I don't think the benefit for gaming would be there if you have to run it through a VPN to slow it down to get an IP to then be able to hook a router into it. And I don't know, it's, that's beyond what I can understand, but I know people would like to see a bridge mode, but then from the little research I've done, it seems people say that since T-Mobile uses CG NAT, that a bridge mode really isn't possible. Now, if people care about this, I mean, there's probably better explanations. But the way I see it, if they can't do a bridge mode because that's how their network's set up, then that's fine. There's no problem with that. But if they're kind of eliminating the need or the ability for you to easily and efficiently add a router, then they need to make their gateway as good as possible and add as many quality router slash modem features into this because this has very little. And kind of what I mean by that is just offering uh, more settings. I mean, the uh, Verizon gateways from the videos I've seen on them, when you go in to log into the router, you have NAT um, settings like for your firewall. So maybe because of the CG NAT, they can't offer the um, NAT settings, but I don't know, that's beyond me. But if they could add it, obviously it's what everyone would appreciate. And I would also, which again is something that I've seen from Verizon, is there's just more router and modem settings on just different things that you can pick. And I guess maybe to better explain that, uh, I just have the mobile app on my iPad here to make it low. So this is all you get. Uh, this basically tells you the same as what that does. So it's just your signal. So if your router is kind of out of the um, your vision, you can just open this up and look at this. And it'll if you had an error, I've never had an error there, but just to check that, but I always get four bars. This is the best feature of this app. You can go in, see what devices, instead of showing a MAC address, it actually shows what the device is named in English or whatever, you know, you picked. So that's really nice. That's the best thing. Uh, I named the network Starlink, so, but you can go in here and update your SSID and password. That, I mean, it has to have that more or less. Support, which uh, to contact them, you have to call them. So you'd call the home internet number there. And uh, go back here. You get a little bit of information and you can restart it. But this is about all it's worth. Check your band and your signal strength and then your 5G metrics. And that's about all you can do. Now this is the login that you can get to from a browser by uh, the address is 192.168.12.1. For some reason, this is even more limited than the app. If anything, you would think it would be the exact opposite. Uh, so you get the same um, cell. You don't even get the metrics, but you do get the bar level. 
and then some information here. And let me go ahead. And then you can check. You can, the only option you have here is you can make it a separate uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. I haven't really seen the need to do that. And that's all there is. So it just makes no sense why this is so limited. And I think the Nokia one offers more, but that's one big improvement. Just give us as many settings as possible. But since they want you to use those limited um, mobile app to check this, one thing, so you get messages here. And like, I can't respond to that. So I don't get that sent to my email and there's no way to do anything. You can't respond. You can only look at them and delete them. It would be nice if you could look at your messages in your app or if you log in to their website and look at your account, you can see your data usage, but you can't, um, you, you wouldn't want to send from this. It doesn't really, it's an internet device. You can use something else to send messages, but since T-Mobile themselves like to send you your payment um, updates and like for the customer service when I got in touch with them, I can't respond to that survey because there's no way to use this as an input device. So that's a small improvement, but that's something they should uh, look at as well. One thing would be the ability to select a band. Uh, for me, where I'm at, when I first got this router, the best metrics I got was on the B2 LTE um, band and the N41 5G band. I'm still on the N41 5G, but I've noticed sometimes, especially at night, I would go to the B66 band. Internet still worked, but the ping would get higher and I wouldn't get as good of speeds. Even though it's LTE, I believe the mid-band 5G still relies on the uh, LTE. And when I, I'm on the B2 band, it's better. I don't know if anyone offers that ability, like any cell phone, any app, any gateway. I don't know if that's possible, but if there is a way to so manually select a certain band, even if it would say, well, it's designed to give you the best signal. So if the B2 is not as good, it switches you to the B66, whether you can pick from me like an auto or just force it and say, no matter what, give me that one. And then if that one's a problem, I'll go in and adjust it. I don't know if anyone else does that, but if it's possible, it doesn't hurt to put it in there. And another important thing would be if they want you to use this gateway and not a separate device, adding quality of service settings to, to where this device has the intelligence and the CPU, the processor inside to dish out the best uh, bandwidth for your devices. Or if you can go in and tell it that, it should have a setting like that. I know the Verizon one does. Again, probably T-Mobile is definitely leading the home internet, 5G home internet. But Verizon, some of the things they're doing that I see from other people kind of is getting me to lean toward them. So maybe T-Mobile will see now what they're doing and copy a couple of these things. I think they need a feature like that as well. But I really think that the best thing they could do would be to add as many improvements to like their base gateway that they send you. But the other option that they could do is offer like a pro tier where everyone gets this, it will be an upgraded version of this or something else that has hopefully external antenna provisions, some better internal settings, but that you could pay, because it's gonna obviously cost more money to offer a better product, that you could separately pay for those interested like me, that then you could get one that has maybe that quality of service. Another idea with that would be if they can make their own mesh system that they can sell where you're like this device is what you get but then if you want um, instead of getting a router or adding one to it that this would kind of just work with their own mesh unit and you could buy it from t-mobile yeah you, know, you could get one or if you need two or three or four like any other mesh system again i'm new to networking and especially in uh, cellular so i don't know if anyone offers that if that's even possible but again it wouldn't be a bad idea if it was possible i'm sure people would pay to have uh, an additional uh, first party mesh network that would be compatible with your T-Mobile gateway. So those are the improvements that I'd like to see, but to close this out, especially this Arcadian gateway that I've had for about three months now, it's never like overheated. It does have a Wi-Fi A access, what I've read. 
I don't know, know for sure, but I believe it does have that. I always get a good signal. Again, I'm down here on a desk, but I always get at least four bars when I have it up on the shelf. So it, it pretty, at least where I'm at, I get a pretty good signal. So obviously, who knows, in the next several months, next year, you're probably going to get this Arcadian uh, KVD-21 uh, gateway and not the Nokia. I've heard more people say they've had overheating and issues with the Nokia, but the Nokia has been around much longer. So, you know, in six months, this one might have the same amount of issues. I don't know. But for me, I, I can't speak to the Nokia, but this one's been working fine for me. I would just like to see those improvements. And the only thing I can say bug wise that I've only had four, maybe five times in these few months was, and it's usually at night, I would still be connected but I would lose internet access. You would look at that, um, open the mobile app, and it would still say you're connected to the internet, but you couldn't uh, view any of your metrics and you couldn't log in. You could only use the app on your phone. And I could, uh, in that app, still view my device list. Like not so much this one, but you could use this. Go into your Wi-Fi settings, cut one of your devices off and this would update. So that told me that it wasn't the internal Wi-Fi. This wasn't frozen up, but the network just wasn't responding. And the only way to fix it was to unplug it, plug it back in. And it only happened a few times. And then once it uh, rebooted, it worked fine again. I thought maybe it was overheating because a couple of times it did it. I was downloading like a large um, video game file and middle of the night. So I was probably getting 80 megabits per second, which I know these are the networks are capable of more than that. So it should have been able to, this gateway should have been able to handle that. So that's why I added this fan, but I don't think it was an overheating issue. I'm not sure what it was. It just seemed like the few times it's done it, you reboot it and it fixes it. So that's something too. I'm not sure if that's a bug that other people have, but I figured I'd mention it. But beyond that, that's really all um, the problems I've ever had with it. So in closing, although T-Mobile offers way more um, coverage with the 5G network. Now that Verizon's more so starting with the LTE, but also some of the C-band 5G for certain areas. And we're seeing uh, what their gateways are capable of. I think Verizon's offering the better gateway, even though T-Mobile may have the better actual service. So I'm just hoping that for constructive criticism, this is getting the job done for me. This is my only ISP right now. If I would have problems or really think Verizon's better, I might get them both and compare both of them. But I would just like to see some of those options, external antennas, better settings, more uh, user control. And maybe T-Mobile doesn't really want the user to mess that much with it. And they just want you to kind of plug and play this. But I don't see why it matters because the people like me and especially people that are even more into this, they're going to mess with it whether they want them to or not. And the average person is just going to plug and play it. So you might as well just offer those settings for the people that want them. And I think really overall, it just gives you a better experience, especially when you see Verizon's doing it. So I'm sure they want to stay competitive and they are. I mean, both of them are really competitive right now. So I hope, I'm just hoping we'll see some improvements. And between the two of them, uh, the 5G home internet will be as good, if not better, and especially cheaper than uh, most of the you know, monopolies of hardline internet. So if anyone knows anything, let me know if any of my uh, wish list is uh, even feasible or what you'd like to see added yourself and how your experience is going. So uh, thanks for watching and you'll see me in the next one. Have a good one.